if you would all remain standing as we begin this day with worship. Let us sing together. Before the throne of God above, I have a strong and perfect plea, a great high priest whose name is love. Whoever lives and pleads for me, my name is graven on his hands, my name is written on his heart. I know that while in heaven he stands, no tongue can bid me thence depart, no tongue can bid me thence depart when Satan tempts me to despair and tells me of the guilt within upward I look and see him there who made an end to all my sin because the sinless Savior died my sinful soul is counted free for God the just is satisfied to look on him and pardon me to look on him and pardon me behold him there the risen lamb my perfect spotless righteousness the great unchangeable i am the king of glory and of grace one with himself i cannot die my soul is purchased with his blood my life is hidden with Christ on high, with Christ my Savior and my God, with Christ my Savior and my God. I bow before the cross of Christ and marvel at this love divine, God's perfect Son. we gather together, would you be welcomed and would you also bow with me and join with me in prayer. Our Father God, we are in awe of your mercy and grace to us today. Father, we invoke your richest blessings upon this day. Lord, as Jesus for joy has endured the cross for us, may we bring him joy and honor today in our service to him. Father, we ask your richest blessings on each graduate today. Thank you for their friends and family that have carried burdens and sacrifices. Lord, may they count it a great honor and, Lord, feel great joy in their accomplishment today. So, Father, we ask that you bless our time now. Lord, that it would be a marked point in our lives of a beginning of perhaps a new service and ministry to you. Father, we thank you that we get to participate in this joyous moment with so many we love you, Lord, and we ask you for your presence to always be with us as you have promised. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Well, <laughs> I 
Okay, I've got to tell you this. You know, it's a running joke around, among my family that I'd cry at the grand opening of a Walmart. <laughs> so uh, I guess I better tell you that to, to tell you there's no way I'm going to get through this, okay? Uh, <laughs> oh, but let me tell you, it is good to be here. I'm overwhelmed this morning <laughs> to be in this building for the first time ever for a graduation here. I praise the Lord for that. We do want to welcome you and everyone here. There's a lot of firsts here today. And I want to say this to you first. On March the 18th, I lost a colleague. We all lost a colleague, a good friend, but a brother in Christ, Matthew Black. Now, I don't mourn like the world mourns. I, I praise God I know where he's at. But I'll be honest with you, I miss the physical separation. So we as a faculty and staff placed his robe and picture, some flowers. We dedicate this service to him. And Miss Ruth, I'm praying for you. Thank you. One of our last conversations before I left Matt was about his excitement <laughs> about having this ceremony right here. So I praise the Lord that we were able to do that. And this service is dedicated to Matthew Ryan Black. I appreciate him, his service to the Lord, his friendship to me, and what he did for Clear Creek Baptist Bible College. So I dedicate this service to him. It's a historic day here on the campus of Clear Creek. I was thinking back, and in my, I've now been affiliated with this wonderful institution for 60 years. And I can think back that I believe this is the first time in a, a little over 60 years that a graduation has been held on this campus. So I praise the Lord for that. We have our first master's degree graduate today. We have our church, first church planting degree graduate today. So there are a lot of firsts here today. Uh, and we give glory to God for all that we're able to do here today. Now, I want to say this to you, too. I realize today it's dark and dreary and damp outside. But I want to tell you what. If you look around our campus and you see, especially around the Welcome Center and the entrance, our physical plant has worked hard Amen. to make this campus a beautiful place. And even though the sun's not shining, you see the flowers and the entrance. And uh, uh, Gary Hinkle, Alan Sanders, Yvonne Webb, Vanessa Jordan, and all of their physical plant crew, I'll tell you what, they have done a fantastic job of, of, of making this campus a beautiful place. And isn't this just a beautiful place? Yeah. It is. I mean, give them a hand, would you please? I just uh, I, I got out driving around this week just looking around and uh, there were some evenings and some weekends that I'd see this physical plant crew out planting flowers and doing things and uh, I appreciate them and, and they love this institution and, and they want it to look excellent and I appreciate that so thank you uh, for them. Now as we begin today uh, I want to recognize some special people. I recognize that there are support systems. We, we see the end result in these graduates that are here, but this has been a long journey for them and for you. And I realize that next to the Lord, the reason that they're sitting here today is because of their support systems that the Lord has uh, planted around them to help them and nudge them and encourage them and push them along the way. So I want to recognize today, I want to say to you, if you are a family member of one of these graduates, I want you just to stand for just a moment. Would you please do that so we can recognize you? 
Wow, look at that. All right. Thank you. Families, let me just share with you. Um, thank you for uh, letting us borrow your family member for these last few years. Uh, you look out over this faculty and staff, and there's people that have poured into them in a mighty way. And that they leave here with a wealth of wisdom, not only from the classroom, but from outside the classroom, of folks that have just poured into them. So we count it an honor and a privilege to be used of God to invest in them. So thank you for your support that you've given them to uh, nudge them and push them and encourage them. Now I realize that even though there's a family support system, a lot of times there's church families and friends of graduates. So let me say to you, if you're a part of a church family or a friend of one of these graduates, let me ask you to stand for just a moment. I, I would like to recognize you. Wow, look at that. All right. Let me just say to you as a church family, you know that uh, one thing that every one of our students has in common is that they have to uh, uh, tell us and show us that they've been called of God to come to a place like Clear Creek, and they have to have a recommendation from their local church. So I realize that as you recommend them, you also stand behind them. I know you pray for them. I know you give financially to them, and you're a big part of their support system. So thank you as a church and friends of these graduates. Uh, thank you for the support that you've given them uh, over the years. <clears throat> and then graduates, let me speak to you and family and friends. I, I want to present to you, I, I think as I look out over this faculty and staff, uh, I, I can think of no greater team that I could work alongside that would pour into these graduates. So let me ask all of you to give our faculty and staff a hand for what they've meant to these folks. <laughs> that goes a long way. I appreciate all of you. I also want to recognize a chairman of our board, uh, Trustee Benny Bush. Benny is here, is on the platform with us. I think his sweet wife, Charlotte, is here. Charlotte, raise your hand. Where are you at? There's Charlotte way back in the back. That's his wife, Charlotte. Brother Benny, thank you for being here today. Uh, let me. Did, did I miss any other trustees? I don't want to miss you. If you're a trustee, raise your hand, please. All right, all right. Well, our preacher for the day is Dr. Todd Gray. Uh, Dr. Gray is the youngest son of Sidney and Cookie Gray. He was born and raised in Lyon County, Kentucky, graduated from Lyon County High School in 1982, and went on to complete a bachelor's degree in marketing at Murray State University in 1987. After graduation, Dr. Ray went to work as a salesman in Indianapolis, Indiana, and it was while living there in Indianapolis he received uh, the call from the Lord and surrendered to the gospel ministry. Uh, Dr. Gray has served as senior pastor of three separate churches over a period of 20 years in Kentucky and Indiana. He has completed both the Master of Divinity and Doctor of Ministry degrees at the Southern Baptist Theological Seminary in Louisville, Kentucky. In July of 2012, he began work with the Kentucky Baptist Convention as a regional consultant in the West Kentucky region. In October of 2016, he transitioned to the role of team leader for evangelism, church planning, and collegiate ministry for the Kentucky Baptist Convention. And then in July of 2019, Dr. Gray was elected by the KBC Mission Board to become the executive director and treasurer. Todd is married to Connie. Where's Connie at? I know Connie's here. There's Connie right back there. Todd is married to Connie, his wife of 29 years, and is the father of two adult daughters, Kira and Anna. Dr. Gray, we thank you for coming today giving of your time, and we look forward here in just a moment to hearing God speak through you uh, to us. So at this time uh, in the program, we do uh, have a few awards that we want to recognize, some uh, academic uh, excellence 
uh, in some of our students at this time. The Joy S. Parker Memorial Award is presented to the graduating female student with the highest GPA. And I believe uh, this award also comes with uh, 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 induction into the Delta Epsilon Chi Society, which is an honor society. And this year, the Joy S. Parker Memorial Award is presented to Rhonda Gilmore. The Richard Mitchell Moore Memorial Award is presented to the male graduating student with the highest GPA. And this year, the Richard Mitchell Moore Richard Mitchell Memorial Award is presented to Robert Thomas Schnitzler. The Trustees Award is presented to a graduate who has shown outstanding ministry leadership in an area church. And this year, the Trustees Award is presented to Justin Christopher Early. And the President's Award is presented to the graduate who has shown outstanding leadership among the student body and in all areas of college life. And this year, the President's Award is presented to Robert Thomas Schnitzler. Dr. Gray, we prayerfully, prayerfully hear you. Thank you, Dr. Fox. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Fox. Would you all join me in telling Dr. Donnie Fox you appreciate him and love him and thank the Lord for him. I appreciate him mentioning that grand opening of the Walmart. Dr. Fox spoke at a Daniel meeting a while back, and he was kind of emotional, and I called him afterwards and said, Brother Donnie, I just want to make sure you're okay. I know there's a lot going on, and he told me that story, and so it kind of makes sense. Penny, you might want to hold off on taking him to Bucky's for a while up on, <laughs> in Richmond. Get a chance to settle down. Thank you, Dr. Fox, for your faithful leadership here at Clear Creek all these years and your connections to this school. And even though your ministry is wrapping up, your connections here are not going to wrap up. Those will last for years to come. Thank you, faculty and staff, for uh, serving these students so faithfully and so well. And Friends and family for your work and helping them get through. I've graduated for a couple of times. If it wasn't for Connie reminding me that uh, we paid for this and God called us into this and we probably ought to finish it, you know, I probably would not have finished some of the things that, that I have. It's just really good to be with you all. Students, congratulations to you all as you prepare to graduate from Clear Creek Baptist Bible College. Things have happened here you'll never forget. You've been challenged and stretched in ways that, that will be with you for the remainder of your life. You've had to do some things you probably thought you couldn't do. 
and you've done them by the grace of God, and so the Lord's got you through this, and He'll get you through some more as well. Go ahead and find your Bible if you have a copy with you, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. I want to speak to you on the subject of finishing well. How many of those of you who are followers of the Lord Jesus Christ, how many of you by the uplifted hand would say, I hope to finish well with my life? Raise your hand good and high if that applies to you. Well, I hope to as, as well. Uh, Henry Cloud, who is an author and psychologist, has written a book called Necessary Ending, and he said in the book, if you want to know how you're going to finish, then play the movie forward. Look, uh, look ahead and see how the, what you're doing right now, keep, if you keep doing that, how's that going to wrap up in the end? Just play the movie forward. And, and we can play the movie forward and see how some things are probably going to finish well and not finish so well. If you've ever watched America's Funniest Home Videos, anytime a guy's trying to uh, jump over his above ground pool in a four-wheeler, you know it's probably not going to finish very, very well. Anytime you go to the grocery while you're hungry, you're not going to finish very well. It's not going to end well. Anything that starts with, hey, y'all, watch this, is probably not going to end or finish very well. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, the Apostle Paul is in a prison epistle, and his life is coming to an end. He's just about to die. And the Apostle Paul gives a summary of his life, and in doing so, you and I get a glimpse of what it takes to finish the Christian life and finish well. And for these graduates, as you embark upon God's ministry calling on your life, uh, I hope this word is helpful to you. If you're able to stand, would you please stand just for a moment and honor the reading of God's word? And I'll read 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 6 through 8, and we'll look at one verse together. Paul writes, For I'm already being poured out like a drink offering, and the time of my departure is near. Paul knew that his death was coming soon. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. Let's pray together. Father God, thank you for your great love and kindness. Thank you for this school. Thank you for these students, these families this faculty, this staff, dear Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the history of this institution and the number of students who sit where these are sitting today, dear Lord, finishing their assignments, their work, and embarking upon your calling. Thank you, Lord God, for pastors and ministers all over Kentucky, dear Lord, and the, and the nation and the world, dear Lord, who've been touched by the ministry of Clear Creek Baptist Bible College. We're grateful for this school and its work. But Father, right now we pray for this hour and pray that you'd work in this time to strengthen our hearts. Holy Spirit, give us the resolve that we need. Know that we can't do these things in our own strength, but by your power, we can do all things through Christ which strengthens us. And then, dear Lord, just encourage us today to move forward. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Finishing well, three simple practices. Here's the first one. If you hope to finish well, then number one, fight the right battles. The Apostle Paul said in verse 7, I have fought the good fight. Now, not every fight needs to be fought. Not every battle is worth fighting. Not every uh, fight needs to be engaged in. Some fights, we just need to let them go and move on. Uh, there, you may have heard about the old pastor who had kind of a preaching hobby horse, his favorite subject, whenever he preached. He loved to preach on baptism. It didn't matter where he was in the Bible. He could always find baptism in that text somewhere. And the deacons of the church got concerned that all this preaching on baptism was going to hurt the church if he didn't preach about other things. And so they got together and concocted a plan and, and pulled him aside. They said, Pastor, would you let us pick a text for you to preach from? He said, I'd love to do that. And they said, would you preach from Genesis 5, 24? They looked at that verse where it says, Enoch walked with God and he was not, for God took him. And they thought, there's no way he can get baptism out of there. He said, I'd love to preach that text. He got up on Sunday night and he said, my text is Genesis 5, 24. He said, I have three points. Point number one, Enoch walked with God. Point number two, you can't walk far in any direction without finding water. Point number three, since we have water, why not baptize this man? <laughs> so that was a battle that they should not have fought and could not win. If you want to finish well, then number one, fight the right battles. The right battle is personal. The Apostle Paul said, I have fought the good fight. He wasn't looking at someone else's life. He was reflecting upon his own life, remembering how God had saved him, how he had met the Lord Jesus Christ on the Damascus Road, remembering that crisis of faith experience where the Apostle Paul received Jesus and received forgiveness of his sin, reflecting over his own sinful life and how Jesus had justified him and declared him not guilty. Maybe remembering that he himself had written, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus and the Apostle Paul had entered into a fight, and it was a fight the Lord had called him to. It's a personal fight, and it is a past fight for Paul, but not for us. He said, I have fought the good fight. I have, past tense. The Apostle Paul was finished. 
His life was coming to an end. I love 1 Kings chapter 20, verse 11. It's been helpful to me to reflect every now and then when uh, King Ben-Hadad wants to attack Samaria, and he makes this big statement to the king of Israel about what he's going to do to him and to them. The king of Israel answered in verse 11, Tell him, one who puts on his armor should not boast like the one who takes it off. In other words, King, you've still got a fight out in front of you, and we still have a fight out in front of us. The Apostle Paul was finishing his, but ours remains, and we must keep fighting the right battles. It's personal, it's past, and it's a prioritized battle. The Apostle Paul said, I have fought the good fight. Not every fight, not every battle needs to be engaged, not every argument we need to enter into, but there is a fight that followers of Jesus Christ and you graduates must fight. You must fight for personal holiness. You must decide that you're going to walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. And in doing so, you will be a person who strives for holiness. You'll fight against sin with all your might. You'll cry out to God and ask the Holy Spirit to enable you to win against sin's power. You must fight for personal holiness. You must also fight for personal integrity. Not only doing the right things, but doing the right things in the right way as ministers of the gospel. But you must also fight for personal soul winning. Somebody has to fight for lost people. The world's not going to fight for lost people's souls. Our government's not going to do that. It's not their job. It's your job, and it's our job to fight for those who are far from the Lord Jesus Christ. Last night at dinner, Connie and I engaged a young lady in conversation. I came back after we'd paid and talked to her a little further and, and found out she's attending a church not too far from here, but she's not yet a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. I had a chance to speak with her and share my own testimony and tell her about the Lord Jesus. I've been praying for her since then because God put her on my heart. Recently over in West Kentucky, knocking on doors with an 84-year-old deacon, we came to the home of a single mother who had five children, stood on her front porch. The deacon had already met her because he'd been out knocking on those same doors, inviting people to church. And as we talked with that young mother, she was very open to a conversation. We asked permission to share the gospel of the Lord Jesus with her. The good news where Christ said, I've, uh, he, Christ died for our sins. He was buried. He was raised again according to the scriptures. That Jesus took our place on the cross. And, and we said, could we share this message with you? She said, yes, but wait just one minute. She wanted to go inside and get her 12-year-old daughter who had been asking questions about the gospel. We stood on her front porch with an open Bible. This little girl read the Bible verses. She understood what we were saying. She was able to grasp the concepts of God as our creator, our judge, the fact that we're all sinful and come short of the glory of God, that Jesus died as our substitute on the cross, that he took our place, and that she could be saved by repenting and believing. She had never heard that message before. She could see the church steeple every time she walked out the door. I'm not critical of the church. They've reached out to her. They've knocked on those doors. But somebody must take charge of that battle. Somebody has to say, we'll take responsibility for the people in our community to make certain they hear the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen, graduates? Amen. Amen. Fight the right battles. Here's the second thing. If you and I hope to finish well, not only fight the right battles, but finish the right assignment. The Apostle Paul said, I've fought the good fight. I have finished the race. Some translations would say, I've finished my course. What do well-known missionary William Carey, evangelist D.L. Moody, author and preacher Francis Chan all have in common? They've all been known for making this statement. They said, our greatest fear should not be of failure, but of succeeding at things in life that don't really matter. Our greatest fear should not be of failing, but of being successful in something that's not going to amount to anything at all in the long run. The Apostle Paul was able to say that he had fought the good fight. He was also able to say that he had finished the race. But it was a specific race. The race that God had set out for him. Nobody else has your race. You have a lane that God's called you to run in. You have an assignment that God has for you and maybe more assignments that he will have for you. There are things the Lord will ask you to do he's not going to ask anybody else to do. You don't have to look at your neighbor's lane and see how they're doing. You don't have to compare yourself to the preacher over here or the, the minister over here to see how they're doing. You run the race that God has set in front of you. We're called to run a race, not only fight the right battle, but to finish the right 
assignment. The right assignment is given. It was given to Paul by God. The right assignment is a gospel assignment. The Apostle Paul in Romans 1.16, he said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God to salvation to all who believe, to the Jew first and also to the, to the Gentile. But it is a grace-based assignment. Let me show you something over in 1 Timothy. And notice the Apostle Paul, as he's going through his resume, and he's considering the assignment that God gave him. Notice what he says in 1 Timothy 12. Paul says, I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who has given me strength, that he considered me trustworthy, appointing me to his service. Paul says, I'm thankful to be in the ministry. Amen? I'm thankful to have a calling on my life. Verse 13, even though I was once a blasphemer and a persecutor and a violent man, the apostle Paul shows us that God can save anybody. And God can use anybody that he saves. We all have a past, but in Jesus Christ, we all have a future. He says, that's what I was, persecutor, a violent man. I was shown mercy because I acted in ignorance and unbelief. The grace of our Lord was poured out on me abundantly, along with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Verse 15, Paul says, here's a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came to the world to save sinners of whom I am the worst. The apostle Paul considered himself the worst of all sinners. And then he says, but for that very reason, I was shown mercy so that in me, the worst of sinners, Christ Jesus might display his immense patience as an example for those who would believe in him and receive eternal life. Paul wasn't glorying in his sin. He was glorying in his Savior, the one who saved him and the one who called him and the one who would sustain him. Then he says, now to the king, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Not only fight the right battles, but also finish the right battles assignment. Dr. Fox is finishing his assignment here at Clear Creek. My guess is the Lord probably has another assignment out in front for Dr. Fox. Miss Penny, you're finishing your assignment here at this school of serving alongside of, of your husband. Others have finished their assignment and are finishing certain assignments. We each have an assignment out in front of us, something that God would have us do. We each need to, whether you're graduating from this school or whether you're a faculty here or whether you're a follower of the Lord Jesus out in the pews, we have an assignment. Amen? We have something God has for us to do, a lane for us to run in, and we need to humble ourselves and take up that calling and carry it out until Jesus Christ returns or calls us home. To finish well, fight the right battles, finish the right assignment, here's the third thing, and I'll close. Hang on to the faith. Paul says, I fought the good fight, I finished the race, I have kept the faith. A couple of years ago on a family vacation, me and Connie and the girls decided we wanted to go whitewater rafting. We were in North Carolina, and the French Broad River is there, and I'd done that before. Connie and the girls never had, and, you know, they put you in that boat, and the rapids were pretty good. The water was rolling pretty good. They tell you to tuck your feet in up under those kind of uh, the panels around the boat. The reason they tell you that is because you're going to hit some water where you need to hang on to something when the water comes. They'll probably give you a chance to jump out of the water at some point if you want to and, and just try floating down downstream. I did that, about drowned, and by the grace of God, I didn't, and got back in. And, and you know, when it was all said and done, we were kind of nervous starting out, didn't really know what was in front of us. Uh, we got quite scared in the middle a couple of, couple of times. But at the end, we looked back and said that was a lot of fun. I believe Christian ministry is kind of like that. We're a little nervous when we start out. You're going to hit some spots where you're going to think, what on earth am I doing? Why am I even here? I can't believe God even called me to this. I don't think I'm the kind of person that can make it through where God has put me. But the Apostle Paul, at the end of his life, he wasn't just putting his armor on. He was laying his armor down and about to go meet the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He was able to say, I've fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. In fact, I'd say it's safe to say that it's the faith that sustained the Apostle Paul. It's that gospel message that we believe. It's the gospel that saves us when we recognize that we are sinners and we're separated from God because of our sin. It's that gospel that sustains us when we go along and not only did we mess up before we got saved, but we messed up after we got saved. It's that gospel that sanctifies us as the Holy Spirit continues to drive the Word of God deep into our hearts and deep into our lives. It's that gospel that keeps us going and sustains us when we feel like quitting and we feel like giving up. Paul said, I fought the good fight. I finished the course, the race. I've held on to the faith. 2001, First Baptist Church, Oak Grove, Kentucky. I was called as their new pastor. 
I hadn't been there very long. It was a military congregation. There was a man in the church named J.D. Stephen, and J.D. was like a lot of folks. He had grown up attending a church. It was a church his grandfather had actually started as a little boy, and then he got married and got on with life, and walk with the Lord just didn't hold the same place in his life that it did when he was younger and when he was even maybe even a teenager. Became a truck driver, had a family, raised a family. Ended up living in Clarksville, Tennessee, and he joined First Baptist Church, Oak Grove. When he joined, before I got there as pastor, one of the old deacons said, J.D., what do you do for a living? He said, I'm part owner in a bar over in Guthrie, I think it was. And the old deacon looked at him and said, we're going to pray for you. And he did start praying for him. And I had been there very long as pastor. And one Sunday night, I was preaching. And J.D. got up from the very back of the building during the invitation, started walking down the center aisle up front, big old burly guy, white beard, white hair. And I couldn't tell if he was mad or, or glad. And he got down there and he took my hand. He said, Brother Todd, he said, I've used the Lord long enough. I'm ready for the Lord to use me. And that night, J.D. Stevens surrendered the rest of his life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Ten years later, I preached his funeral. And I can tell you from my testimony, the Lord used J.D. the rest of his days. If you're about to graduate from Clear Creek Baptist Bible College, you have your entire ministry out in front of you. I urge you today, those who are about to graduate, I say to faculty, to staff, to the rest of us here as well, just decide today for the first time or again today, I want the Lord to use me. I want my life to be in a place where God can always use me. Go wherever he says go, say what he says, say trust God for the results. I want God to use me. Amen? There could be some here this morning, very possible in a crowd like this, and maybe there's some friends and family members here that you've come to support and show love for a friend or a family member, but you yourself have never received the Lord Jesus Christ as personal Savior and Lord. If there's someone here like that, I just want to say very lovingly to you from the Scriptures uh, several things. First off, I'd like to say God loves you. Amen, folks? God loves you. You're here and you're not yet a Christian. You need to know that you haven't sinned yourself outside the love of God. No matter what you've done or what's happened, God's love remains toward you. First, uh, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. That includes you. But it is true that our sin separates us from God. And we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. Every one of us. We haven't all done the same things, but we've all sinned against the same God. And our sins are not just sins against other people. They're an offense to God. God's offended by the sinful things that we do. Make no mistake about it. The world may say it's okay, but God doesn't say it's okay, and God hasn't changed. Sin is like a stain that cannot be removed by good deeds we do or churches we join or religious rituals like baptisms that we perform. But there is a way to be made right with God. Jesus Christ, King of kings and Lord of lords, God became man, uh, took on flesh. Jesus died on the cross as our substitute, paying the price for our sin. Jesus is alive today. He gave this invitation. He said, the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. And Jesus said, repent and believe the gospel. Repent means turn to God with all your heart. Turn to Jesus from your sin. Trust in him to save you and do what you can't possibly do for yourself. And you'll discover life begins the moment that you give your heart and life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen, folks? Amen. Amen. Let's pray together. Father God, thank you for your grace and mercy. Thank you for this wonderful gathering. Lord, thank you for these students, this faculty, this fam these families and friends. Thank you for Dr. Fox and Penny. And Lord, we thank you for our Lord Jesus Christ who gave us eternal life and then called us into a gospel ministry. Lord Jesus, one day you'll return or call us home. Help us to be faithful until that day comes. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Clear Creek has a long history with the Kentucky Baptist Convention, and that can be and will continue to be for one reason, that we're both bound to the same standard, Amen. that we're bound by the Bible. And I appreciate convention leaders who show up and speak up for the Lord according to his word. Amen. And we're so thankful for you. I'd like to ask the candidates for degrees to please stand if you would. Mr. Chairman, I have the privilege of presenting the members of the 2022 graduating class who have successfully completed the requirements for their degrees. As chairman, 
Creek Baptist Bible College. I am pleased to acknowledge the 2022 graduating class with the authority of the Board of Trustees of the Clear Creek Baptist Bible College. I award these degrees with all the rights and privileges that they confer upon each and every one of you. And I'll accept the front row if you can go ahead and see it. Our first degrees are the bivocational ministry certificates. Dustin Jeremiah Blair. Clear Creek has truly blessed my life in so many ways. I am thankful to the faculty and staff, and I'm thankful for the bivocational ministry program. Without the flexibility of the online classes, I would not be able to attend and learn more about my faith in God and how to apply it to my ministry. Alvin D. Brown in absentia. Q. H. Horn in absentia. Delina Carol Lakes. My time at Clear Creek has been a joy and a blessing. I truly never saw Bible college in my future, but God laid it on my heart, and I'm so thankful I pursued it. Every professor poured into me and equipped me for the call God has placed on my life, and my sweet family encouraged me to stay the course. Russell Joseph Landry in absentia. Our next awards are to the Bachelor of Arts in Ministry candidates. Shane A. Bingham. I will always remember and cherish the relationships I have created with my fellow classmates and professors. I was an online student, but one semester was on campus, and it was the most important semester for me. The grace and love shown by the faculty and the students really makes Clear Creek a special place. Brandy Birchall in absentia. Terry Birchall in absentia. Colin Ross Coots. My fondest memories of Clear Creek were spending time with the Lord, getting married to my wife, Rebecca, and growing in the Lord with her. I'm also thankful for the many opportunities I received to serve the Lord while here. Nicholas Duval in absentia. Justin Christopher Early. My fondest memory of my time here at Clear Creek was in hermeneutics class. During the lecture, Dr. Helton looked at us with his cupped hands and said, you don't have a life. <laughs> I am forever grateful for the support of my family, friends, and all my professors, especially Dr. Goodman. <laughs> Rhonda Jewel Gilmore. My fondest memory of Clear Creek is the first time I came to campus for student orientation. I felt the presence of God that saturates the entire place, and every doubt about where God wanted me to pursue my education was erased. A special thanks to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and to my family, my pastor, my church family, and every professor that poured into my life. Gary Allen Herndon. My fondest memory is the time when I went to Dr. Hilton's office to get a recommendation on commentaries. And what he did next, I'll never forget. Dr. Helton cleared his shelf of all his Old Testament NAC commentaries and gave them to me on the promise that I would read them. I am very thankful for the lifelong friendships I have made with the students and faculty. Derek Lynn Jeffers. My fondest memory of Clear Creek is when my car broke down at Cannon Creek Lake. <laughs> I didn't know who to call, so I called my professor, Dr. Goodman, for advice. He wasted no time in coming to get me. I would like to thank the staff and faculty of Clear Creek, my church family, my family, and especially my wife, who believed in me and supported me. Most of all, I thank the Lord. Brant Caleb Jones. 
One of my fondest memories of Clear Creek was when I wrecked my truck on Smith Hill. John Foster and I were able to get out of the truck, but Justin Rasnick was not. <laughs> when the firemen arrived, expecting the worst, Justin popped his head out of the truck laughing, saying, I'm stuck. A brotherhood was formed, as well as a family connection with the faculty and staff. Trent Caleb Keaton, in absentia. Connor Alexander Reed. One of my fondest memories is taking a term on campus. As an online student, it was great to be able to experience campus life and get to know on-campus students. I would like to thank my professors, my wife, my parents, my best friend, Colin, for all their support and encouragement. Robert Thomas Schnitzler. My fondest memory of Clear Creek is meeting and marrying my wife, Taylor, and making lasting friendships with students, staff, and faculty. William Corey Smallwood. My fondest memory of Clear Creek is when I made a transition from online to on campus. The in-person classes, friendships built across campus, and opportunities to minister totally changed my walk with Christ. I am thankful for the faculty, staff, and student body. All glory be to God. Nathan Stone in absentia. Alex Ryan Wheeler. My fondest memory is from the spring of 2020. On February the 6th, classes were canceled due to flooding. And that night, my friends and I watched Avatar, The Last Airbender. It was a great time of bonding and sharing. I love the friends I made in my time here, especially meeting and marrying my beautiful wife, Abigail. Our next degree represents another first. The Bachelor of Arts in Church Planning accomplished through the three plus one approach, Randy G. McDaniel. I remember the first day of class. I got syllabus shock. It's a real thing. I came home from class and told Alicia to box everything back up. We're headed home. Alicia looked at me and said, no way. We are not going back home. God called us here, and if he called us to it, he'll bring us through it. In that moment, I got out of the way and followed what God called me here to do. Our final award, another first, the Master of Arts in Ministry to Franklin Lee Taylor, Jr. It is customary for those who have completed a terminal degree to have the doctoral hood placed on them by the department chair. In recognition of our first student to complete the Master of Arts degree, we thought it fitting to have the master's hood placed on him in ceremony. Our Director of Graduate Studies, Dr. Charles Goodman, is charged with placing the hood on our very first Master of Arts graduate. We mark this occasion with the presentation of a plaque. With this plaque, we hereby recognize this student as the inaugural graduate of the Master of Arts in Ministry program. Frank has also been nominated and accepted into the Delta Epsilon Chi Honor Society of the Association for Biblical Higher Education. Our chairman will present the Master of Arts in Ministry Diploma to Franklin Lee Taylor, Jr. Every day that I devoted to schoolwork was a day of enlightenment and accomplishment. Every class served a great purpose in educating and challenging me. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this day that you have blessed us with. We ask that you help our graduates 
to walk in your wisdom and grace. We pray for spiritual eyes and discernment in all things. Help them be wise leaders and influencers in this generation, not conformed to the world, but transformed by your power. We ask that you would equip them with all that they need to make a difference for your glory. Help our graduates to live as salt and light in a dark world that so desperately needs to know your truth. We ask for your power to help them to walk continually in honesty and integrity. Continue to build within our graduates deep godliness that they would be more concerned about their character than their reputation. We pray that they would seek to bring honor to you throughout their lives and have a wisdom and a heart for the kingdom, extend their boundaries, and give them incredible influence with people and nations. Make their hearts and spirits open to the plan and purpose you have for them and to be willing to boldly go wherever you call. We are eternally grateful for each graduate and we pray for your divine blessing upon their lives. We pray this in the name that is above every name, the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Now, alumni, I'm gonna, or graduates, I'm going to ask you to stay standing just a moment. I'm going to ask you to take that tassel and move it over to the side. All right, welcome to the body of alumni of Clear Creek Baptist Bible College. Yeah. Now, uh, I want to say to you, there's uh, a responsibility, I believe, that you take with you from this place, who uh, your, your family, your church, your supporters, and the Lord has invested in you, we want to ask you, as we charge you, to make a pledge to keep the faith as you go forth from this place. So I have a responsive reading here. I want to ask you to respond uh, in the graduates, uh, as, uh, in the graduate section, as you respond to this charge and you give your pledge. The granting of this diploma marks your assumption of relationships and new responsibilities both to Clear Creek Baptist Bible College and to the Church of the Lord Jesus Christ. You are officially made one of the alumni of the college. You are now responsible for the application of your studies to ministry and a finer quality of leadership for the church. Christians will expect you to be a reliable guide in the realm of doctrine, and morals and discipleship and a sure guide to right relationships with Almighty God. As a member of the graduating class of May 2022 and in the presence of God and these witnesses, I promise to hold my degree so that no loss will come through my holding. With confidence, we send you forth from this campus to join those God-called men and women who have preceded you. Now, we believe the education you have received here has launched you on a lifetime of consecrated learning, which will make you ever more effective in ministry. You have been blessed by your studies here. Now, you must be a blessing to others. We send you forth with the prayer that God will guide you. We hope that however far your journey takes you, you will visit this campus often. If you cannot return to walk on campus, we hope you will make the trip in imagination and memory. But wherever you are, may the Holy Spirit use you as a witness to introduce men and women to the God and Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and to stand firm in the faith as a testimony to the word of God and to the church as the pillar and ground of truth. Now you have received from the hands of countless people and churches a generous portion of the cost 
of your education for ministry. Now, many of these donors do not know you and have never visited our campus. By faith, a portion of their lives have been minted and channeled through Clear Creek Baptist Bible College into your life because they hoped for more excellent ministers of the gospel. Gratitude requires not only that you strive to fulfill their hopes, but also that you strive to transmit their hope for competent ministers to the hearts of others. Now, we trust that you will not only be a supporter of Clear Creek, but that you will also be a solicitor of such support to the end that future generations of ministers may be accorded even richer opportunities than have been yours. Your gratitude to all who have had a part in your education can best be expressed by your faithfulness as a Christian minister. Welcome to the body of alumni of Clear Creek Baptist Bible College. <laughs> God help us, God help us to never forget the work that is before us. If everyone would now join me as we sing a hymn of commitment over our graduates. Every year we're asked to do this and as I was praying through this year, the song Jesus Firm Foundation came to mind. Graduates, you have got a firm foundation. Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior and the word in which he's given us. I pray you use it wisely, use it well, and all glory to our Savior. Sing with me.
Let's pray. Father, Lord God, we thank you for this day, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, as we think about the many blessings that we have seen, as we think about your hand through this service, as we think about the day as we go through, Lord, I pray that you use this graduating class, Lord God, to send out a great revival. Lord, we pray that you just give many, many souls to the work. And, Lord, I pray that you guard them, you protect them, Lord, in a world that wants to devour. But, Lord, we know your hand is powerful and your word is true. And, Lord, let them preach with boldness. Lord God, we are so thankful today of a place that we can come to called Clear Creek. You've called us here, but, Lord, now you're calling them to their next steps. Lord, open their eyes, their hearts to receive the very steps that you have for them. Lord, give us the strength, the boldness to serve you anywhere, any way, at any time. And Father, we want to shout again, hallelujah. Lord God, you are good. And Lord, we ask this in Jesus' name, and amen.